Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven by clear and convincing evidence that Ms. Heard acted with actual malice? Answer, yes. As against Amber Heard, we the jury award compensatory damages in the amount of $10 million. As against Amber Heard, we the jury award punitive damages in the amount of $5 million. As against John C. Depp II, we the jury award compensatory damages in the amount of $2 million. As against John C. Depp II, we the jury award punitive damages in the amount of $0. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Cosmic Culture, the channel where we talk all things major movie and trending pop culture news daily on the channel. Now, yesterday, you're probably aware that the Amber Heard Johnny Depp lawsuit issue defamation trial came to an end. The verdict was revealed and after six long weeks of televised and public legal battles, we have a close to the case. And I want to talk today about one, what does this mean? What are the different types of damages that were given and who won? Who lost? What's the story? So there's a lot that goes into a case of this matter. And six weeks in, we learned a lot about Johnny Depp, about Amber Heard, and about the legal system. So I'm going to show you a few videos, the verdict being read, a few of the reactions of people in court, although Johnny was not there the day the verdict was read, and of course, reactions. Amber Heard put out a long letter talking about her thoughts as to the outcome. And of course, others have spoken up as well. So stay tuned for that. And then of course, after I'll give you my opinion, if you haven't already consider subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our other major movie and television news updates, trending updates, and everything else going on in current pop culture stuff. So don't miss out on that, subscribe, and comment down below. What did you guys think of this trial? Did you follow very closely? Or are you just here to hear the verdict and move on? So this is a fun and different video. Many of you guys don't know this about me, but I actually studied law in college. I have a bachelor's degree in legal studies. So I think a lot of this stuff is relatively interesting, especially when you start diving into the big legal point of any type of argument that happens in court. When things happen in court, it can change the face of law. It can change the overall way that a law is looked at and the way that it can be determined and deciphered in court. So it's very important for a jury and for a judge to get to a answer and to set the precedent for what a certain type of law means, whether it's defamation, whether it's the First Amendment, whether it's the Second Amendment, any of the type of laws that you might be familiar with or have heard of, there's something that is referred to as precedent. And a precedent is a later case that is often referred to by lawyers inside of a court case saying, hey, back in the day, this is how this was. This is how the law is deciphered. And if you lose a case against that, well, that can reset the idea of precedence. Now, you might be looking at this case and say, well, this is Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. It's defamation. They're arguing about which one screwed which one over and who was worse. And yes, at the end of the case, they both received penalties for damages. Now, there are different types of damages and penalties that you might have to pay after a civil suit like this one, and I'll explain those and which person got which damages. But this case wasn't necessarily about defamation as much as if looking back at it as a lawyer, you would say the first amendment. Now, the defamation came from both of these individuals through big publishing newsprints like the New York Times, The Sun, The Daily Journal, different groups like this where they went to and they wrote different op-eds, different personal pieces explaining, hey, this is what Johnny Depp did to me. And then Johnny Depp went and did the same thing, saying how she's lying and how this isn't real. Now, the case was brought together to explain defamation, that, hey, Amber said all this stuff about me. It's not real. I've had all of these issues and problems. I was kicked out of Disney. I was kicked out of Warner Brothers. I've lost a lot of sponsorships. What's going on? Well, guess what? I'm going to sue her for $50 million in a defamation case. Amber Heard actually retaliated and said, well, Johnny's doing all this stuff too. He's wrote some op-eds and, and my life is starting to be affected. I'm going to sue him for $100 million in a defamation case. Let's go figure it out. Now, that is the personal look at, hey, Johnny versus Amber. But overall, the case is about the First Amendment, her ability to speak out and say whatever she wants to. So keep that in mind as we continue to talk about the finale of this case and even Miss Heard's response after she found out what the verdict was. So we saw the video where they're talking about the damages and they go through a whole list of different things that were being questioned because it isn't simply a she said, he said, yes or no. There are different things that are being challenged and different questions and points that need to be proven by the lawyers on each side. 
So when they go through the Ms. Heard side of things, they found her guilty of pretty much everything that Johnny Depp accused her of. And they say this go by go. Guilty? Yes. This? Yes. Did she do this? Yes. And then at the very end, they talk about damages. Specifically for this case, compensatory and punitive. Now, a compensatory damage is intended to recompense someone who has experienced loss, a suffering, or injury. So the question was, did Johnny receive any loss, suffering, or injury from the actions of Ms. Heard in this defamation case? And since they found her guilty for defamation, they said yes. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. And they award Johnny Depp $10 million in compensatory damages. However, she was also found guilty for the need of punitive damages. Now, punitive damages are a little different, and this is specifically against the defendant, who in this case is Amber Heard, was presumed guilty of intended misconduct or negligence. So basically, they found her guilty for this as well, and they told her another $5 million was owed to Mr. Depp on top of the $10 million for compensatory damages. And that's exactly what we saw in the clip that we watched. Now, Johnny Depp didn't come out of this completely unscathed, as they did find him guilty of also defamation against Ms. Heard, which means that he lied about certain things that happened, or rather didn't prove that he didn't lie, and that the things that he said affected her in a way that rationalized giving her damages. So she also won $2 million from Johnny Depp in compensatory damages, which, as I mentioned, are damages intended to recompense someone who has experienced loss, suffering, or injury. But overall, Johnny Depp won every single argument that he brought to the course. He won $15 million in damages, and Ms. Heard did not win all of her arguments against Mr. Depp, and she only won $2 million, so Johnny Depp's walking away with this with $13 million from Amber Heard. But that's not so much what was important to Mr. Depp. In fact, he would have probably been happy walking away with $1. What he wanted was the yeses coming from the jury when they were asked about the specific issues that were brought up in civil court, specifically the defamation cases, the sexual harassment, the abuse, and the other things that Johnny Depp had to argue against Miss Heard for. Now, Miss Heard's big argument was that she was sexually abused and they did not find him guilty of this. They did not find him guilty of any of this negligence, of the domestic abuse, of the domestic violence. There was not enough evidence to support this. Whereas the legal team that Johnny brought did find sufficient amount of evidence to show that he was, in fact, abused and that he was, in fact, defamed in the defamation case based off of the words that Amber Heard had said, trying to spin the entire thing against Johnny, so not only mentally terrorizing him, but also physically abusing him. So yes, $15 million, well I guess $13 million is fantastic, and I'm sure Johnny will be happy to cash that check, especially since it has Amber Heard's name on it. However, that's not the important part. The important part was the win. He proved, in a sense, his innocence, or at the very least, that it didn't go one way. If you recall originally, when all of this actually blew up, when Johnny Depp lost his job with Warner Brothers, when he lost his jobs with Disney, he was kicked out of Fantastic Beasts, which he was already a very important part of, and Amber Heard, who worked with Warner Brothers as well in the Aquaman movie, did not receive any type of issues. And that was because of the way that the court was handled. Now in England, the court, you are not innocent until proven guilty, you're guilty until proven innocent. And at the time, Johnny Depp did not have enough evidence to prove his innocence. So that was a big problem and a major reason why the first time around, this did not go in Johnny Depp's way. However, over here in America, Virginia, in fact, where the court was held, Johnny didn't have to prove his innocence, he had to prove Amber's guilt. Which, if you've been watching along and I can't get into all of the evidence and detail that happened over a six week trial, it was very, very clear that she was guilty. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, this wasn't just about defamation, it wasn't just about Amber Heard, and it wasn't just about Johnny Depp. Freedom of speech right now is a huge hot button topic going around in the world, on CNN, Fox News, wherever it is you watch, or whatever it is you believe, because of Elon Musk trying to buy Twitter, and his big argument is we need to have freedom of speech. That we need to be able to say whatever it is that we believe, and we can't be shut out by the media, or we can't be shut out by big tech businesses like Twitter and Facebook that censor things. And this is a huge hot button topic. Well, the freedom of speech case that we had here can have some relation to overall the idea of what freedom of speech is. 
Now, this isn't a legal battle yet, but this is one that is happening on the world platform. It is happening on Twitter. People are giving their opinions, and you can see that the big center of it, Elon Musk, who's trying to buy Twitter for $44 billion, and is saying about freedom of speech being important, has made many a comments about how there shouldn't be censorship. There shouldn't be people banned from a site because of their political views or their beliefs or their faults. There should be the ability to say whatever you want to say on an open forum like Twitter. Now the argument against that is, well, people say whatever they want, and it doesn't necessarily have to be true. And it can be whatever it wants. And I can post anything. I can post an update saying that, oh my gosh, I'm a professional astrologist, and there is a massive meteor headed towards Earth, and we're all going to be dead in three days. Well, I'm not an astrologist, there's no meteor coming, and we're not going to be dead in three days. All of this is lying. Freedom of speech is a very interesting topic, and I don't think that this single case has solved it, obviously, because people disagree with what should be and shouldn't be allowed to be stated in public forums, whether in person or online nowadays. However, we do learn from this case specifically that freedom of speech doesn't cover or protect you from lies. Now, Johnny Depp specifically and sufficiently proved that Amber Heard was guilty of lying in her op-ed that she wrote and that she had published had the idea of freedom of speech kind of turned against her a little bit. Now, I don't personally believe that freedom of speech has ever protected lying or spreading of mis and false information, like standing up in the middle of a building yelling fire and there is no fire, so you've sent people into a panic and you've potentially put people at risk and danger of injury or even death because that could throw an entire building into a frenzy. Now, I think that would leave you liable, and if you tried to use the argument, well, freedom of speech, I can say whatever I want, you're still going to be found guilty of potentially punitive and compensatory damages depending on what happened to those around you. Because there was, in fact, no fire. Now, that's what we're seeing in this case specifically, and Amber Heard even talked a little bit about how her right to freedom of speech was breached in her response after she lost this case. She said, The disappointment I feel today is beyond words. I'm heartbroken that the mountain of evidence still was not enough to stand up to the disproportionate power, influence, and sway of my ex-husband. I'm even more disappointed with what this verdict means for other women. It is a setback. It sets back the clock to a time when a woman who spoke up and spoke out could be publicly shamed and humiliated. It sets back the idea that violence against women is to be taken seriously. I believe Johnny's attorney succeeded in getting the jury to overlook the key issue of freedom of speech and ignore evidence that was so conclusive that we won in the UK. I'm sad I lost this case, but I'm sadder still that I seem to have lost a right that I thought I had as an American to speak freely and openly. Now, we don't have a statement from Mr. Depp, who, as I mentioned, was not actually there for the hearing of the verdict. He had returned to his home. I think after six weeks of having all of his personal business thrown out there, he was a little bit finished and done with it. And however it ended, he had said his piece. It turned out pretty well for him, and hopefully we do hear something from him soon, because when he lost in the UK, he did release a letter saying that this wasn't over and that he was fighting to prove his innocence. And that's where this case came from. Originally in the UK, when he did lose, he lost everything except for one sponsorship with Savage by Duar, and their sales have gone through the roof. Now, I'm getting a little bit more biased, and I tried very hard to remain unbiased. However, I do think that this was a completely correct case. I do think Johnny Depp was a huge, huge, huge sufferer of injury and loss and many other issues that had happened. And I'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about my opinion here in a second. I do want to, however, talk about what Ms. Hurt said, saying at the very end, I'm sad that I lost the case, but I'm sadder still that I seem to have lost a right I thought I had as an American to speak freely and openly. As I mentioned, this was a defamation case. It's about Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurt and them fighting in their arguments and the, the damages that they put upon each other. However, this was also a freedom of speech case. Moving forward, this can be now used as precedence to, well, what happens if you lie? What happens if we can prove that the things that you are saying are not true? Do you still have freedom of speech? And the answer is no. And I don't think that this is new information. I don't believe the law has been changed. I think anybody who spreads misinformation that lies, that uses their influence for the creation and spreading of those lies will not be protected by the First Amendment. And the fact that she's even sitting here after everything that happened in this case saying that she should be protected by the First Amendment maybe is an indication that she and many others don't understand what the First Amendment is. Now I'm just going to start sharing a little bit of my opinions based off of the evidence that was shown in court. Obviously, I do believe both of them are at fault for probably 
hurting each other, whether physically, emotionally, yelling, abusive, screaming, they didn't have a great relationship. We know all of the stories of what Amber Heard did to Johnny, which the jury found to be true, and we've heard a lot of the accusations of what Amber Heard said that Johnny did, which the jury did not find to be true. So overall, I think the entire thing is a massive mess, but I think we saw something interesting here, and I'm not a man who suffers domestic violence or really ever has, However, it is interesting when we hear the specific recording from Ms. Heard saying that, yes, Johnny, go tell the world that you're a man who suffers domestic violence, who you were beat up by me, blah, blah, blah. You guys have probably heard the video. That tape specifically for me was a big turning point in this case. The domestic violence that Johnny Depp, who I think mostly has been described and seen as a very gentle and fragile soul, who's afraid... And it seems like for the most part he was used so that Amber Heard could use his fame to jump up herself in the polls and maybe get some work. And there was even some talk about whether or not Amber Heard got her work from Johnny calling friends over at Warner Brothers and putting in a good word for her and essentially what he believes, and though she doesn't, getting her her jobs. So there was definitely a lot for her to gain and apparently a lot for Johnny to lose as he was abused and this was proven in the court of law. Very, very sad. Johnny has said that he will not be returning to Disney or Warner Brothers to work, so no more Pirates of the Caribbean, no more returning with any Warner Brothers projects that he may or may not have been working on. But it does seem like there are some projects in the works, and we're going to do a whole video on Johnny Depp's future and if he will be returning to acting later on here on the channel. Let me know what you guys thought about the case and if you liked this simplified breakdown of the verdict of everything that happened and what potentially it could mean for U.S. laws moving forward. Thank you guys so much for watching to the very end of the video, and thank you guys so much for being subscribers on the channel. If you haven't already, consider subscribing, and I will see you guys in the next one right here on Cosmic Culture.